is an aphrodisiac. This fall, you'll find out it's true. Mars Pro proceeding to Mighty Max. A line on Vector 206, making mid-course correction to Vector 207. Investigating metallic object. Let's switch to zoom. Deploying probe. It appears we're looking at some kind of... some kind of ID. What do you make of that, George? I'll be darned. I don't just own my business. I am my business. When you run your own business, there are no sick days. I treat my customers the way I expect to be treated, like the owner. Over the years, we've worked with thousands of small businesses, and we've learned something from all of them. Introducing Solutions for Small Business from Bell. I am the last boss I will ever have. Order the classic, 12 long stem roses, $24.95. Or the ultimate, 24 long stem roses, $36.95. The phone number, 5-F-L-O-W-E-R. When you're thinking of a florist, dial 5-Flower. No matter where he goes, we will follow him, we will track him. A convicted sexual offender tries to start a new life, but will his victims ever let him? I want to see him dead. Hunting Bobby Otway, Tuesday on Witness. The faces of our future. The faces of hope, enthusiasm, energy. Young people battling to make a better world. Join them in their fight on Rainmakers, Thursday at 7 p.m. Ride 'em cowboy. Is there room in the 90s for this family business? A good old fashioned Wild West show. No oh, invest money in show business. Hitting the road, Tuesday night on Venture. <laughs> The CFL on CBC. Brought to you by The New Bell. We'll earn your business. Welcome back to halftime at Ivor Wynn Stadium in Hamilton, where the Toronto Argonauts are threatening to humiliate the hometown Cats 22-3 at the half. Well, the Cats sorely missed their record-breaking former quarterback, Matt Dunnigan. His career was cut short one year ago right here by a concussion, the 12th of his hard-nosed career. Matt Dunnigan is starting over now as a college football coach in the U.S., but he still laments his loss. This is Valdosta State University, home of one of the top Division II football programs in the U.S. Nestled in quiet small town Valdosta, Georgia, this is where Matt Dunnigan has come to start a new career in football. He's a coach now, offering the skills he can no longer use himself. Balls away! Balls away! Squeeze him! Squeeze him! Squeeze him! As a player, he, he tried to do what you could as a leader, but for the most part, you were concerned and looking inward and making sure you were ready. And as a coach, your accountability is to all those people and all those, you know, the entire team. Go! 358, search! If I was going to get involved in coaching, this is where I needed to do it. Because being involved with, you know, your best friend as your head coach gives you a totally different learning environment than somebody else. He brings a professionalism with him that, uh, um, that you just don't find. And, and he's giving these kids the intricacies of really playing the game of football. And uh, they respond to him, his, you know, his, just his leadership skills, his emotion that he brings, um, and, and his demand and command of being the best that you can be. Get there, get there! Wendell, Wendell! 697 split. Check, check, release. Pew. Look at that. Look at that over there. Uh, Look, two guys ran here. Check, zone, boom, right there. Get you the rock. You're scoring, man. You're in the paper. The kids are looking at you. You know, you're their mentor. And you do have, you know, just balls of clay in front of you that you're trying to mold day in, day out. And you got to be careful in what you do there and how you massage it, how you, how you work that, how you approach those kids. 
go. I miss playing. I miss throwing touchdowns, calm plays, being in those pressure situations. But I'm going to get that on this end, too. Um, being in those pressure situations, knowing that you're infecting everybody with your preparation, it's going to be probably a little more intense. Not as physical, and I don't miss that at all. Um, I don't miss waking up, you know, feeling like I've just been hit by a truck. Um, I don't miss that at all. Just successive blows to the head, you know, and, man, I had, I had enough of that. You know, three is usually the limit. You know, I had 12. Uh, you get six a year, you know, you don't even talk about. The last time it happened to me, August 2nd, in Hamilton, playing against BC there, uh, when it, when I got hit, I've been hit so many times in my career. When I got hit that last time, it's like I had a candle in my hand, and it just went, and it's, it was, like, blown out. It was, and I never had that, I always had a burning desire, passion to play the game. When I got hit, something completely changed inside. Nobody needed to tell me that I was, oh, whatever. I, I went out there every day and challenged myself and the people around me. That's what I'm gonna do as a coach. That's all you have to do as a person in life. Go out there and reach it, keep it simple. Dad always said that. Keep it simple, son. When you lay down at night, you know you've done your best and tee it up again the next day. Your heart has to go out to Matt Dunnigan on this night. He told me earlier this summer that he still feels the effects of his concussion, still sees spots, and still has headaches. We wish him well. Matt Dunnigan's Tiger Cats are hurting tonight, too. They're down big, 22-3 to the Argos at the half. When is the best time to install Unilock paving stones? Right about now because you'll make no payments and pay no interest till the spring of 98 on any Unilock installation. Do it now, you'll save yourself a bundle. Plus call today and receive our free design video, a must before you start any landscaping project. Get the prestige and beauty of Unilock. Call 1-800-UNILOCK and pay nothing till the spring, but you have to call right about now. What else is so rare, so naturally brilliant, so exquisitely pure, that it can capture the light of your love? This year, give her the diamond that will take her breath away. The evil is there. Experience the hallucinations of a truly haunted writer. What's up? They say you murdered your wife. You're a mock man, Bill. You're just gonna have to leave town. You are very raw. You feel like a bug. I think the New Order could find a place for a man of your caliber. It's good to be wild sometimes. I must be hallucinating. The zone is full of surprises. Naked Lunch, Saturday on CBC. Whether you're one, a hybrid in one, or any age in between, there's something special just waiting for you to discover on the magical world of Disney, Sunday on CBC Television. Hi, sweetheart. I want to bring Violet home for Mom's birthday. Violet's in a good home, and she'll stay. She really misses us. Won't you let her come? Can't you ever stop punishing Honey for marrying Jack? Wind at my back, Sunday on CBC. My name is John Kimball, and I love my car. He's a cop. It's murder one this time. Now you're mine. Going undercover. You walk into it showing fear. You're dead. No fear. To face his toughest enemy. Good morning. In a class by himself. Who is your daddy, and what does he do? Our mom says that our dad is a real sex machine. Kindergarten cop. Good. Thursday at 8. Back in Hamilton, it's all Argos at the half, 22 to 3 on a steamy night here in the Steel City. Well, earlier today in part one of our Labor Day doubleheader, the Eskimos took a beating in Alberta. They may have lost quarterback Danny McManus with a re-injured shoulder, and they lost big on the scoreboard, 27-14 to Calgary. Here's Steve Armitage with a report. If you're a fan of the Calgary Stampeders, it was indeed a classic here at McMahon Stadium this afternoon. The Stampeders over their 
Hated rivals from up north, the Edmonton Eskimos by a count of 27 to 14. And the big story for the Stampeders, their offense totally dominating the Eskimos in the first half, led by Jeff Garcia. Jeff, it was the kind of afternoon that uh, all quarterbacks enjoy. Well, in the first half, I thought we did some great things offensively. We really controlled the ball on the line of scrimmage. We were able to run the ball well and, and therefore open up some passing lanes. And uh, I thought in the first half, we executed well. Second half, we had a drop off, but our defense really rose to the occasion. They played a great game today. Speaking of running, uh, Jeff, uh, you did that exceptionally well, especially in the first half. Well, at times, they're going to open up some lanes and they're going to allow me to run, and I'm going to take advantage of it. If I can get positive yardage, then uh, go for it. <laughs> Was it just a case of you taking what the Eskimos defense gave you? Well, at times you have to do that. Uh, they play very soundly defensively. They do a great job of, of uh, playing their defense. And, you know, they're not easy to move, move the ball on. Um, you have to take advantage of the little opportunities you get sometimes. And sometimes you just have to dink the ball off and allow your guys to run with it. And we were able to do that at times. Jeff, you're right back in the hunt. That's right. We need to keep pressing forward. The Calgary Stampeders with a big win over the Edmonton Eskimos here at McMahon Stadium this afternoon, 27 to 14, to even their record at five and five on the season. We can also tell you that Eskimo defensive back Derek Beatty, who was taken to hospital by ambulance late in the game, has been released from hospital and flew home in good condition with the Eskimos. Here at Hamilton in the nightcap of our doubleheader, Mike Pinball Clemens with one of three TDs in a big Argo first half. I'm a long way from home, baby. I got one thing on my mind. Yeah, I'm such a long way from home, baby. I just got one thing on my mind. I'll be howling at the moon. I'm the restless kind. There's also some serious stuff happening under the hood. GMC Sonoma, 365 days a year. Mars Pro proceeding to Sector 7 Alpha. Let's see, we've got a dusting of fine grained silica particulate, a ferrous compound meteorite, igneous outcropping, visa sign, some basaltic fragments. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Mars Pro proceeding to Sector 7 Bravo. I don't just own my business, I am my business. When you run your own business, there are no sick days. I treat my customers the way I expect to be treated, like the owner. Over the years, we've worked with thousands of small businesses, and we've learned something from all of them. Introducing Solutions for Small Business from Bell. I am the last boss I will ever have. This morning, the sun rose, and I woke up. Now I will cut the strings off my mittens. I will get on the bandwagon and stay on it. I will be curious. curious. I will build it and they will come. I will be more than just a number. I won't get in line. I'll start a new one. And when the sun finally sets, I will be there. Next. Introducing new Ultra Ivory in the new compact bottle. We made it such good value that it's nothing short of remarkable. It's concentrated, so milliliter per milliliter, you can wash up to 70% more greasy dishes than the leading green brand. And that can help you save money. New Ultra Ivory. Concentrates on value. Back at Ivor Wynn, just about set for the second half. 22 to three, the Argos lead the Tiger Cats. In their last start, Doug Flutie threw three interceptions in the first half against Saskatchewan. This time, it's three touchdown passes. They exploded in the second quarter, Chris, with three touchdown passes, and you see the passing yardage reflected there. And Darrell Mitchell was his guy on the first one after a play action fake. Mitchell gets in behind coverage, and here's a blown coverage, and this is something that this Hamilton defense couldn't afford to do, and Flutie's going to seize the opportunity. See the two defensive backs running to catch up with Darrell Mitchell. He scores once again, and, and if you're going to play man coverage, you know Dar uh, Doug Flutie is going to look for pinball Clemens, and here he sticks another one in the end zone. Three second 
quarter touchdowns. And the last one coming at 1440 of the second quarter. So a late drive by Flutie. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats in a huge hole at home. And they told us Doug Flutie for the first time maybe all season long is healthy. And so were his first half statistics. Boy, he, he didn't miss many. I mean, he five, three misses there. And that's what makes him so good is he, his completion percentage coming into the game tonight was 66%. Anthony played a pretty good first half. He had some good numbers. And he was replaced near the end of the first half by Ricky Foggy. I think you'll see Calvillo back in the ball game and try to get something going. That Foggy heading to the bench, and so it looks like it will be Calvillo to start the second half. Mike Saunders has dropped deep, but Pinball Clements accepts the kickoff to get this second half underway. And look at Clements once again. Productive yardage on a return to the 37-yard line. And the Argos will be in business. Cooper Harris again led the surge downfield for Hamilton. 28 yards on that return by Clements. Well, you're almost better off if Pinball doesn't take it back on you. If you make the tackle, then you've done your job on special teams. Now Doug Flutie, who comes in red hot, 15 to 18 in the first half. He now will try to get something going immediately. Drop the ball off, get himself a completion early in the second half, get himself back into the flow. Only one 400-yard passing game for Flutie in the first half of the season. Now teams have really played off against this Toronto team and only rush three people as they're doing here. Here's Flutie over the head of Saunders. Well, that's what happens. You come in from halftime, come back out on the field from halftime, and you're back into game mode. You might hold, pull the string a little bit, meaning you don't follow through, and that'll let that ball ride high, and that's what he did there. Had Saunders in the scene. And immediately pointed to himself as the guilty party on the play, but just his fourth incompletion of the game. Doug was saying before the game that he expected again Hamilton to drop all those people back. Not much of a pass rush. He said it worked the last time they played for Hamilton. But he said, I'm a lot more mobile now. I can make things happen. Second and 10. And there's Mazzotti. First down yardage and Mazzotti drilled down at midfield by the safety, Aaron Ruffin, who went out of the game late in the first half with a nick. Toronto has had to play against this style of defense so much throughout the season. Once Hamilton was successful with it early in the season, Saskatchewan jumped on the bandwagon. Hamilton came back with it again, so they've developed an offense to spread them out. Six receivers, spread the defense out, find the creases. From the Hamilton side of midfield, first down. Flutie make that shovel pass. He's in trouble, but gets away from Whitehead. And now looks deep, wide open was Kerwin, and coming back and getting the flag on the play was Kenny Wilhite. And Willie Whitehood, Whitehead laments the one that got away. Well, Doug's pounding on his chest saying, that's my fault. Kerwin had got in behind the coverage, and Doug threw what us quarterbacks hate to refer to as a duck. It went end over end and just had nothing on it. And uh, Kenny Wilhite never picked up the ball, and so subsequently pass interference on 26 for Hamilton. So the ball has been marked at the 11 yard line. Now Kenny realizes he's beat, so now he's got to get back and just try to keep it from being a touchdown. And he didn't realize the ball was thrown as poorly as it was. Goes threatening again. It's out in the flat, and that's Saunders, and the former cat will score, but there is a flag on the play. And this one's coming back. Procedure. Toronto number 87. Repeat first down. 87. Darrell Mitchell, who's been in the end zone himself twice, that time a little over anxious, and it cost the, uh, the Argos a touchdown pass to Saunders. So first down over from the 16, first and 15. Brody steps up, six 
Daniel Amen now throwing into the end zone to the corner touchdown. And Mike Clements has his second of the game. He's got one for both of his girls now. And Pinball makes this play because Doug breaks the pocket and scrambles. Pinball was about 15 yards deep in the end zone. He scrambles back to the front pylon. And Doug sees, you see Doug peering over here a little bit. He knows he's got pinball over there. Only a three-man rush, so not a lot of pressure. Now he's going to put pressure on the defense by running. Waving his finger around, but pinball comes back to him right at the pylon. And Eric Carter's way too soft. There, there was nobody else over there. Eric lost sight of where pinball was. Whenever your quarterback scrambles out of the pocket, you come back and help him. Pinball's been doing that for a long time. So a couple for Mitchell. And a couple of touchdown passes to Clemens. And flags fly as Vanderjet puts the convert through. Clemens has three catches, 34 yards, and the two touchdowns. Procedure, Toronto number 56. I love it. I'm Chad Folk. Love it. CFA. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. You can go now. That's it. Cut. That's your cue, Dave. <laughs> so Vanderjet has to do it over again. Five yards further back. Has a bit of this concert yet this year, and Vanderjet continues the streak. And the Argos are streaking here in Hamilton. Want to get to the hometown and hated rivals. As Canada's auto parts store, Canadian Tire offers you even more. Like our Lona Tool program. If you need an auto tool, just come to our auto parts counter, choose from a selection of specialized tools, and we'll loan you one at no charge. And there's more. You can also bring your brake drums and rotors to any Canadian Tire Auto Parts counter, and one of our staff will expertly machine them for you. It's convenient, and you know the job will be done right. Canadian Tire, Canada's auto parts store made better. With its power to excite you, the way it feels in your hands, the beauty of its design and its undeniable quality. This may be the treasure you've been looking for. Take the bright side of the road. The new 1998 Toyota Camry. Take the bright side of the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, how's business? Booming, and I'm saving a bundle on long distance. You switched to Sprint Canada. And bang! I'm paying just 15 cents a minute on calls and faxes within Canada, even during business hours. <laughs> Get the most for your small business. Calls and faxes are just 15 cents a minute to anywhere in Canada, even during business hours. Dinner time, Pop! Get the most for the least for your small business or home office. Call Sprint Canada today, 1-800-496-MOST. Daryl Mitchell with two touchdowns. Mike Clements with a pair of touchdowns, and the Argos are way out in front, 29 to three. Urban Bowman was reminiscing about last year's game. Sure, he didn't want to talk about it. 38-7, the score last year in the Labor Day Classic for Toronto, and he said, "I've never seen the Argos sharper." Well, the Argos are uh, giving him uh, an instant replay here tonight. Here's Aaron Ruffin. Trying to get outside. Donald Smith with the nice tackle. And Ruffin upended. 17 yard return. Well, the Ticat said if they were going to score on them, they were going to have to put sustained drives together. But that's only been the case once tonight. Yeah, only four plays to put the ball in the end zone. You see a three-man rush. This gives Doug a lot of time. Now he's going to float up in the pocket. You see people have to come to Doug to make the play, and you see how far Eric Carter is from Pinball Clemens. Easy throw for Doug Flutie. Anthony Calvillo back at quarterback. Archie Amerson wrapped up by Rob Waldrop, and down he goes. Waldrop, the only All-Canadian on this Argo defense last year. Top lineman last week in action against Saskatchewan. 
Well, Waldrop's a load in there when he plays against the run. He, he's not a monster guy, 6'1", 270, but he, he just takes up a lot of space, eats up a lot of players. You see his, his numbers coming into the ball game. Not a lot of sacks, but he's just there, and he eats up a lot of blockers. Second and 10. Valveal, and that's batted down. Looked like Reggie Givens, the rush end, was in there. And the swarming Argo defense causes another two and out. Well, this has been a story that's gone on and on for the Hamilton offense. They just can't seem to get anything going. There's the pressure by Reggie Givens. Here's Waldrop we were talking about. Look at him, two guys on him. He still gets pressure. You see him still get clean. Two offensive linemen, Newton and Blaine, Blaine Schmidt, still working him, but he still got pressure. As Paul does to Clements and the Argo 40. Nice cut back there. Blaine Schmidt brings him down at the 48. 38 yards on the punt. Nine more yards for pinball as we join Mark. Here in the booth with uh, CFL Chairman John Torrey, who's taking in the action here on a Labor Day evening. Uh, your comments on a pretty decent weekend of football in the CFL. Well, Labor Day is always an important weekend for us, Mark, and we've had uh, good crowds everywhere, an overflow crowd in Saskatchewan, a great crowd in Calgary on CBC Today, great uh, and a better crowd in Montreal, and, and uh, all the sort of underdogs won the game. Now, that's not happening so far here in Hamilton, but again, a better crowd here tonight. So we're hoping that uh, the kind of fall will see us continue to pick up and not have any problems, which we haven't had really all season. Things are going much better. Uh, you were just named as the acting commissioner of the CFL. Uh, Jeff Giles confirmed as president. But what about a hunt for a commissioner? Where's that at? Well, we're not actively looking for a commissioner at the moment. The governors have decided whether they're right or they're wrong that uh, Jeff Giles and I are working fine in terms of keeping uh, stability and, and we're on the right track in terms of getting things in better shape. So we'll stick with that arrangement for now and uh, not, act, not, not actively look for a commissioner for a while yet. All right, John, thanks for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mark. Chris? Uh, Mark, the art, the... Ticat fans have something to cheer about. You just saw Willie Whitehead pick up the fumble as Robert Drummond mishandled the direct snap. And the Ticats get the ball back on the Argo side of midfield. Calvillo looking for Winfield. Donald Smith there. And an incompletion, and Winfield may have come up lame. Yeah, Earl really struggled to get out of that route. Looked like he might have twisted his knee at the top of his route and really didn't come out of it. Donald Smith played it extremely well, but it was a well, well thrown ball by Anthony Calvillo. What's the plant? See, it looked like he turned the knee and the ankle just a little bit. Wasn't able to come out of it very well. All time leading Hamilton receiver, number six all time in yardage in the CFL, number seven in the league in touchdowns in his illustrious career. Here's Calvillo pulling it down, and he'll take off. And Reggie Gibbons was on him first, knocked it loose. Marcelo Simmons has it, and he's going to go. Marcelo Simmons with the touchdown, 65 yards. Well, the Argos answer back with a fumble recovery of their own, and ouch. Well, this is all a result of Anthony Calvillo re realizing that he's not, he has nothing going offensively, trying to do a little too much. They didn't get anything on first down, the incompletion to Winfield. So with everybody dropping off at coverage, Calvillo decides he's going to run with the football, and he got to put the football away. Anthony knows that. He's had some problems fumbling the football this season, and uh, this is exactly what they did need, a, a cheap touchdown for the Toronto defense. That's the ninth fumble by Calvillo this year. The seventh, the Cats quarterback has lost. Remember, he had four in the game against Ham uh, Montreal a couple of weeks ago. That's Anthony competing, just trying to make something happen, and he's just trying to make some kind of play for his team, and as it turns out, he makes a bad play for his team. Extra point added by Vanderjack. So Simmons in a new position, celebrates a touchdown and an Argo 36-3 lead. Want to make your car look new? 
Every time you wash it, don't forget Armor All Protectant. The dash, the tires, the trim. It's new car juice. It doesn't just shine, it protects. So your car doesn't just look new, it keeps looking new. Armor All, it's new car juice. Football's here, so bet on Proline. He sleeps for us! Now, the mega hit of the year is here. It's Ford of Canada's factory authorized clearance. An action packed hit with an all star cast. Choose low 1.9% 48 month factory financing on all 97 Taurus and Sable. Or choose 3.9% 48 month factory financing on most 97 models. Or up to $2,500 cash back. If you only take in one event this year, this is the one. Now playing at an Ontario Ford Mercury dealer near you. The never-ending pasta bowl, just $7.99. Order any of our special pastas and enjoy as many free refills as you'd like. From spaghetti with meat sauce to fettuccine alfredo. With unlimited salad and breadsticks, all just $7.99 at the Auto Garden Canada. There's Lester Smith, the safety, and he was involved in the play, helping jar the What's ball that, loose into What's the that, hands of Marcelo that, yeah. Simmons for the 65-yard touchdown. Well, Lester Smith is coming on what they call a zone blitz. It means he's coming to his free safety spot, and you watch him come in from behind and rake the ball out right there. Marcelo Simmons gets the Sunday hop, or the Monday hop in this case, for a touchdown. Here's Willie Brown, the rookie. It's there for Brown, he's down at the 30-yard line. Like Adrian Smith might have been shaken up on the play for Toronto. Well, Dave Archer, we look at an Argo defense that has completely foiled the Hamilton Tiger Cats since the opening drive. Uh, how would you attack a defense that leads in that many categories and has been so good. Well, I had the misfortune of having to face these guys three times last year, and we struggled against them. But we had a chance to beat them in Toronto last year when I was with Ottawa, and it was because we were extremely successful on first down. I don't think they're overly good man cover people. When you get a second and medium situation, and I mean six, five, four yards to convert and move the chains, that means they got to play some man coverage. And I don't think they're overly great playing man coverage. I think the two corners are. Donald Smith and Adrian Smith, but the two halves probably aren't as good a cover people. Matt DeBuck is the injured Argonaut. Backup running back who sees action on special teams. And I know this was a fear Eric Tillman had prior to the game when I talked to him about losing Canadian players at this time or any time of the year. It's extremely difficult to replace Canadians. And DeBuck is being attended to now. He's on his feet and looks like he should be all right. Well, DeBuck plays all the special teams for him. And I talked to Don Matthews at the beginning of the year, and he was really excited about DeBuck. DeBuck hadn't gotten to play a lot on offense, but he would be the guy that came in if something were to happen to Pinball Clemens. And he compares him with Pinball, and that's, that's pretty high praise. Native of Montreal who played at Texas Tech. But the Argos coming into the game had fewer injuries than most croquet teams. Uh, Antonius <laughs> Bonner was the only player on the injury list with a foot problem, and he's probably ready to go next week. Now a snap is mishandled, but Amerson gets loose on the right side. Archie Amerson down by Benson. Mike O'Shea in the area as well. Gets up close to the 40-yard line, and... That's a pickup of eight to nine, and Emerson musters a smile. Other than the way Earl Winfield plays, this guy's been their most valuable player this year. Earl, Earl in just five games, this being his sixth game, has caught over 400 yards worth of balls and has lent a lot of leadership. But And here you see Earl downfield. Here, here's what he does. He's gonna, he wants the football first of all. He says, let me see. Let me see if I can get a block, and who's he pick out? Well, he kind of shoe dusts uh, our boy Michael O'Shea there. Here's Amerson trying to kick it outside. He was slowed up on the play by Demetrius Maxey, and that allowed the Argo pursuit to get there. But Archie Amerson really is a, a solid player for this team. He's a young guy, and I think he can develop into a big-time player. I think that they're going to find that they're going to be able to do the same things with Amerson.
BC's doing with Al Shipman. Move him as a receiver, let him run the football. He's got a lot of skills. I think he's he's destined for, destined for some stardom in this league. So one one and eight team not having the good fortune that the other one and eight team had yesterday. Both the Winnipeg Blue Bombers going into oversold Taylor Field and Jeff Reinbold enjoying his second win. And we we're talking about this yesterday. Teams have to just kind of look for the next step along the stepping stone, try and get within a couple of games of Saskatchewan for that last playoff. Here's a block punt. And don't look now, but it's getting worse. Adrian Smith is into the end zone. Donald Smith blocked the punt. And as Baldison taking exception with the hot dogging from Adrian Smith, a former tie cat. Now it's one thing to put it in the end zone, but uh, when you're hot dogging around the goal line, you'll draw a crowd of black and gold. Well, especially when you're doing it right in front of the bench of the Hamilton Tie Cats. And I don't blame pa Paul S. Bolson. And if I were one of his players, and I know I, you shouldn't condone this, but I'd have been right down there with him. That's ridiculous. Just get the ball in the end zone and act like you've been there before. And this is a championship football team. Donald Smith had the block, and you see how Bolson is extremely upset over Donald Smith with the block and Adrian Smith scores but you know act like a play like a champion act like a champion and I, I don't agree I don't I don't think that that was a championship tactics right there by Adrian Smith and he has been there before he had a touchdown against Hamilton in the regular season last year on a pick and of course in the great cup game he had the decisive interception of a McManus pass that's a trade that's a trade two years ago well, that's the reason he said Adrian Smith dealt by the Tiger Cats and rubbing a little salt in the wound here. 42 to 3. And the extra point to come. Forty-three three. Well, Adrian's talking about being traded two years ago. If he hadn't been traded and right Right there is the guy that's going to come through and block it. That's Donald Smith. And he is untouched. Johnny Harris gets picked up by the up back, and Donald lays out. Well, it's a super block. Super block. And there's, and you see, here's the hot dogging that Paul Asbolison took exception to. And, you know, he, he, co he complains about getting traded two years ago. Well, he wouldn't be wearing a Grey Cup ring if he hadn't gotten traded two years ago. So maybe he owes him a, a little bit of thanks. <laughs> Low snap, but it was just the fact that Donald Smith was completely unblocked, and he saw three Argonauts around the punter, and that's not good protection. Results in, in the bad play for the special teams for Herb Bowman and his crew. Well, you see Osbaldiston in, and uh, he's going to get a bunch of his friends on the scene very quickly. Osbaldiston, a 12-year veteran. He's still steamed. I think he's more steamed about Smith than the putt block, but it's been that kind of night for the Ticats. Well, Adrian Smith is a is a real good corner, one of the better corners in this league, and he's a solid player, comes to play every night, but I don't think that when he looks at that, he'll realize he's playing like a champion. Here's Aaron Ruffin. Ruffin cuts it back. With a determined run up to the 35 yard line. Now the Tie Cats will play for next week and play for some pride. They talk about pride. Aaron Ruffin has a tremendous amount of pride. He was really jacked up before this game, the starting free safety and kickoff return, man. And you see there's not a lot going on for Aaron Ruffin. You see he's running side to side. You'd like to go north and south as a kicker and find it says, okay, I'm gonna make something happen north and south right here. And he does. Got another 15 yards for his team. These two teams will meet again in two weeks' time at Skydome, fourth and final meeting. Here's a Shande Smith trying to get outside. Shook one tackle. And now he's forced out of bounds by Reggie Givens. And what speed Givens has from the rush end position. Well, that's what Don Matthews wanted to do with this defense, build speed 
Reggie Givens is one of those guys. In fact, Reggie has made a couple guys on this team expendable. Don Matthews went out and tried to find people who would upgrade his defense. This is the Grey Cup champion, folks, and he went out and found a couple other people to upgrade this defense. And like we said, they're number one in 15 of the 25 categories. Five yards for Smith. It's second and five. And it's Smith again. And he couldn't shake the tackle of Charles Anthony, who read the play nicely. And now, Calvillo on the offense, hearing it from the fans here at Diver Wind. Well, they're trying to get the ball in the hands of the guys that can make a big play out of something small. Shonde Smith, his main attribute is his speed. But Charles Anthony and the crew for this Toronto defense just seem to rally to the football so well when it's thrown underneath. Well, let's see if they can get better protection to Osbaldiston on this punt. And Clements driven back to his 18. By Clements. Ran into his own man, flagged down. As Clements is upended at the 34 yard line. 52 yard punt. 15 on the return, pending the flag. Gerald Bond with the tackle. Some sad cat fans tonight that I ever win. Oh, hi. It's Midasize Days, and that's why we can't afford a complete commercial. We couldn't afford the whole screen. But, you know, what we saved, we're passing on to you. For a limited time, Midas will give you a computerized wheel alignment, plus balance all four wheels and rotate your tires, all for an amazing $39.95. They even inspect your brakes for free. What a deal. Okay, so you lean in and squint, and the commercial will look perfectly normal. Huh? Midas, the way it should be. Offer ends September 27th. What else is so rare, so naturally brilliant, so exquisitely pure, that it can capture the light of your love? This year, give her the diamond that will take her breath away. No matter where he goes, we will follow him, we will track him. A convicted sexual offender tries to start a new life, but will his victims ever let him? I want to see him dead. Hunting Bobby Otway, Tuesday on Witness. The faces of our future. The faces of hope, enthusiasm, energy. Young people battling to make a better world. Join them in their fight on Rainmakers, Thursday at 7 p.m. All right, here's offensive coordinator John Jenkins, defensive coordinator Bill Bradley, and they're in charge of the X's and O's. They, uh, one has the X's, Bill Bradley, the other one has the O's, John Jenkins, but I think Doug Flutie has more of the O's on this offense. It's been uh, like playing tic-tac-toe for the Argos, hasn't it, tonight? 43 to 3. Woody stays in the game. Gets it off to Drummond. Robert Drummond on the move up to the 35. And a first down for the Argonauts. Well, just when you thought you'd seen everything from this offense, as Eric Carter is down, the all pro corner for Hamilton. Got a little knee twist there. But just when you think you've seen everything from this defense, they come up with a, a little hitch screen to Robert Drummond as Eric is not able to get off the field. But they're just so diverse on offense. They, they have so much versatility with the two backs, Clemens and Drummond, and they, they just come at you from so many different angles. And at this point, this defense is worn out. They've been shell-shocked a little bit, so... Uh, it's difficult for them to come out and play every drive as hard as they played early in the ballgame. Mentioned that Winnipeg win yesterday and our congratulations to the Bombers and Jeff Reinbold, but uh, this, just watching this might bring the Bombers back down to earth because they're next on the Argos agenda next Sunday. We'll have it for you on CBC. Both. The Cats will regroup and play at home. They got the ankle, Calvin Tiggle rolling over the tackle. Got the ankle of, of Eric Carter. He goes down. 
Looks like he's reaching for the knee, so he might have got the knee on the play. Getting back to Jeff Reinbold and his crew, if I know his attitude, and I think I do, he's going to relish the fact that this team is coming in on a high note in Toronto, and uh, he's going to be excited about putting his defense on the field. And, you know, he's in charge of that special teams crew, and Dexter Dawson had the 90-yard punt return for a touchdown yesterday. Dexter Dawson will be a factor in that ball game as pinball is in this game on return. So that's going to be fun to watch those two little guys mix it up. So Eric Carter, one of the premier corners in the CFL, hobbling to the sidelines. Aaron Ruffin, the safety, will move out to Carter's spot, and that'll bring Rob Hitchcock back into the game as the safety. Five and a half minutes to go. Still in the third quarter at Ivor win. And the Argos in a rout. One of those games where Doug Flutie and company will now get to pad some stats. They're throwing it wide side and it pops incomplete. Intended for Mazzotti. And Don Matthews will leave Doug Flutie in. He's not worried about injuries or running up the score. He says this guy has earned his right to be number one. And when you get to be number one, you get to play. Yeah, but I, I don't agree with the philosophy. I think that Flutie should be on the bench at this point. It's 43 to three. Doug Flutie's been nursing some injuries all year long. All it takes is somebody come in, clip him in the leg, and now you're back to where you were a couple of weeks ago when Doug Flutie was not as effective as he is normally. Here you got a healthy Doug Flutie. Get him off the field. Get Andre Ware some opportunity to get in there and play. Second and 10. Pass off the fingertips of Masadi incomplete. And right there, Doug Flutie took a big shot from Michael Philbrick. I, I'll be highly surprised if we see Flutie on the next series, but he has played the majority of the downs for this football team. See, those are negative thoughts, Dave, but Don Matthews says he never <laughs> has negative thoughts. And he hasn't been exposed to a lot of negatives as a head coach in recent years, three-time coach of the year and in the Great Cup the last three years with teams he's led. Well, the five-time MVP would be on the bench for me in that series. I guarantee that. Great punt by Vanderjet. And Steinauer over the 35-yard line. Well, who comes out at quarterback for the Hamilton Tiger Cats? It's still Anthony Calvillo back in. Well, Don Matthews, in assessing his opposition, said that the Tiger Cats were a team that didn't seem to have an identity on offense, and uh, clearly uh, an identity has not emerged in this game. They really struggled to put anything together. I don't think we've mentioned Prince Wembley's name today. Prince Wembley is a solid receiver, the number two receiver on this team. Mike Morreale hasn't been involved, and I don't think Archie Amerson has touched the ball enough. And Wembley had a 69-yard touchdown catch last week. There he is. Time they've thrown his way, but it's overthrown incomplete. Well, the fans have been on Calvillo for most of the season here, and he is hearing it from them again tonight. And talking with Anthony Calvillo, he said, I wanted to play a great game before the home crowd. I wanted the home crowd to see me play well. He played well on the road coming into these the last two times. He had three consecutive 300 yard games. He just has not been able to put together against the best defense in the league. Second and 10 for the Cats. And Calvillo airing it out looking for Winfield against Donald Smith incomplete. And it will be third down. And after that first drive for the Tie Cats, they have not been able to put anything together. Well, Donald Smith has done a great job out on the corner all day long today, not, not to mention the, the punt block that resulted in a touchdown. But he's just running stride for stride here. And this has been a great play over the years for the Tie Cats. Just hang the ball up and let Winfield get it. Anthony's throwing the ball a little bit too far downfield. Let, let Winfield go up and try to climb. Donald Smith to make the play and Smith still down I believe over there after the, the contact. He missed four weeks with a broken arm earlier this year. He's a big guy though six feet 190 has good speed and of the two corners he's the gambler of the two. If, if he's going to jump a hitch route or come up and try to steal an out route that he's the corner that'll do it. Adrian Smith hangs back a little bit more and 
and plays a little softer, although he's a solid player. Donald Smith is the guy you got to worry about because he's the guy that kind of comes up and makes the plays and saw him make the play on special teams. There's a former Argo, Mike Campbell. And Calvillo now on the sidelines. Third down, and Osbaldiston's in. Lock it up Great kick by Osbaldiston again, who's pumped up after that block punt. And pinball, a nifty little move right down along the line. Well, another tough night for Anthony Calvillo, who talked about the problems he's had this year and hearing it from the fans in Hamilton. Fans are fans. You know, they're going to love you one play, they're going to hate you the next. That's just the way things go. And, uh, you know, our fans have been frustrated all year because we've been losing and we've been losing at home as well. We, we haven't won a game at home all year. So uh, I think the way we could turn that around is, is, is getting a big victory. Well, we hear from one quarterback while another one in the broadcast booth was correct in his assessment of who would be in it, quarterback for the Argos in the next series. It's the other Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware, who has seen limited duty this year. Ware's pass in the flat for Clements. Pitball draws a crowd there. Game tackle at the 32-yard line, and that's behind the line of scrimmage. This is a great opportunity for Andre Ware to come in and get some good game experience. He's got an over a quarter left, and he comes in and immediately throws the guy who leads the league in receptions. Pinball Clemens, he catches a lot of these short passes, but he turns them into plays. And if anybody ever doubted the toughness of this guy, you got to remember this guy's 5'6", 170 pounds, and it took about six tie cats to bring him down. That's just the fourth pass thrown by Andre Ware this year. He's completed three of them. As those plays take to the wrist, we'll see what he calls. Looks for Mazzotti, and he's drilled by Frank West at the 38. That's a short gain for the Argos, and they'll be in a punting situation. Yeah, but you already see the intelligence of Andre Ware because the first two guys who caught the football for him, Pinball Clemens, who's been around here for a long time, and the next guy, Paul Mazzotti. They're two longtime Argo veterans. Two good guys to get the football to. Yeah, keep the vets happy. That's a <laughs> pretty good idea for the quarterback. 2.19 to play. A long third quarter and a long evening for the hometown guys. Here's Kenny Wilhite. Wilhite stepped out to the 35 as we join Mark Lee. Chris on the sidelines here with a couple of former Ticat greats, uh, some breakup champions. That's Bronco Nagurski, the offensive tackle from the 60s, and everybody recognizes Angelo Mosca, the big, bad, sometimes dirty defensive what lineman for the whatever, Cats. Whatever you want to call me, don't call me late for breakfast. What are you guys doing together here this weekend? Well, first of all, it was great to see Bronco. Bronco come up from this, he's from this area originally with a wife. He married a girl from here uh, 31 years ago, or 30, 35 30, years 30, ago. 35 years ago, and uh, I got a hold of Bronco, and Bronco said he'd get a hold of me when he come in town, and we're having a little nostalgic weekend. Bronco, uh, too bad that the Cats can't win on this nostalgic weekend. How about a comment on their play? Well, it hasn't been very impressive tonight. All the games that we used to play with the Argos were real dog fights. They were real battles. There was always a great tradition, and it's kind of, it's just one of those things. It's not their year. A lot of conjecture about the firing of uh, Don Southern, the defensive specialist, and defense not their strong suit here tonight, Angie. It's pretty obvious. You know, I, I, I'm really dejected because uh, usually we got up for this game regardless of what kind of a year we were having. And uh, I, I don't think there's enough people working hard enough to make this game into a football game. They got a great crowd here tonight, some 18 and 19,000 people. And I think uh, without the trigger guy, uh, remember last year, four and one done again after five games, and now we don't really have a quarterback. All right, thanks very much to a couple of tie cat greats, Angelo Mosca and Bronco Nagurski. Chris? Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, Mark, Angelo Mosca is uh, like most of the fans in Hamilton. They speak their mind, and uh, <laughs> they're getting impatient. Ricky Foggy's back in now. Well, I think we alluded to the fact that the I don't think the fans are seeing the kind of offense that Anthony Calvillo runs when they had the spread offense that Dunnigan was so successful with, as you see him come up with a first down here, and this is a this is a positive. They haven't had a first down the whole half. It seems like I think Calvillo.
field's strength is to spread the field, similar to what Doug Flutie does. He's got a big arm, stretch the field. You saw the numbers. He racked up some big-time numbers last season, threw for over 500 yards twice last year in that run-and-shoot style of offense, and that fits him a little bit more. I don't think he's comfortable in the two-back offense play-action pass. Ricky Foggy now in is taking the reins. And they have their first first down of the second half. Foggy under pressure, and he delivers that ball low and incomplete. Intended for Andrew Grigg. Reggie Givens was putting the heat on the Hamilton quarterback. Well, Foggy's one of these real positive guys. Steps in the huddle. They said when he stepped in a couple of weeks ago in the Montreal game, when that game went south on him, they brought in Ricky Foggy, and it seemed to really light a fire under the offense. And it'll be interesting to see if they respond to him again. He's been in once this game. They weren't able to move the football, but what they need to do now is to try to work the football down the field, put a couple of points on the board, a couple of scores, give themselves some confidence to go into next week. Second and ten. Here comes the pursuit again. Foggy, mobile, getting out of trouble and throwing to Prince Wembley for a completion. And that'll be close to a first down. I think he's going to be just shy as Wembley has his first catch of the game. Well, they give him a good mark, and it is a first down. Well, this is Foggy's strength is to make people miss. He was with Damon Allen in Edmonton, and that looks a little bit like Damon Allen right there. And Ricky's played well in this league. He's throwing 85 touchdown passes in this league. He's not, he's not any stranger to what's going on. And again, Waldrop fighting through the block of Newton, putting the pressure on Ricky Foggy, but Foggy makes him miss, and he comes back to help. Foggy, a nine-year CFL veteran. Play action and throwing it for Smith, and it's knocked down by another Smith, Adrian. You got a Shonday Smith, Adrian Smith, Lester Smith, Donald Smith, and an incomplete Tiger Cat pass. That's the final play of the third quarter. Urban Bowman and the Cats having their helmets handed to them on their home turf. I seen you guys playing tennis here before. Look, we're not from around here. I'm just trying to do my job. Understand that? I'm trying to help you out. Run, Ashley, run! Hey! Hey, 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 hey! Off the fence. A couple of monkeys up there. Game over. The night's done. Jackasses. Feel the effortless performance. Bask in the total comfort. Relax in the soothing quality. And above all, savor the peace and quiet. As long as you can. Take the bright side of the road. The new 1998 Toyota Camry. Take the bright side of the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike Clemens has a couple of touchdown catches in the onslaught. 196 total yards. Andrew. Your host, Mike Pimbo, please follow me. Oh, to the big team. Beautiful guy. Hey, guys on TV. Say hello, all the big guys. Hi. Hi, Sam. How are you doing? Stephanie, I love you, Stephanie. Emily. Hi, Mom. Susan. Hey, everybody. He's going to have everybody on before it's over. Well, since the second quarter, Toronto has dominated the game offensively. They averaged 400 yards a game, and they're well on their way to doing that again tonight. You see, the time of possession is in the favor of the Ticats. That's what they needed. They just gave up too many big plays on defense. See, Clemens is a smart veteran. Get the old lineman on TV, and then he doesn't have to take him out for dinner. <laughs> it's a lot more expensive. Here's Ricky Foggy, second and ten, and in trouble. Gets away from the initial pressure, and now has Kenneth a catch for a bear, a 
two top Canadian finalists. Well, Andrew Stewart's got his helmet kicked back on his head, and he's a little winded. You see him whiff right there on Ricky Foggy, and this is what Foggy can do. Runs around him. If you're only going to rush three people after him, he's going to run around until somebody comes open. This is kind of what Doug Flutie's been doing tonight a little bit. <laughs> I got nothing else to do, so I might as well show you a sign. Nice to know Mike Vanderjatt's on our side. Didn't beat it. <laughs> I don't know about the artwork, but here's Amerson left side. And Archie Amerson down to the 39 has four for the Tiger Cats. Well, he got drugged down at a bad angle there. It looked like he might have twisted his ankle. But just as he accelerated, he got drugged down from behind. And a lot of times the defensive player will fall on the back of your legs. Looks like he flipped him in the back there. And Amerson's going to have to go off for a little help from the, uh, from the trainers. Ken Avera was coaching the secondary at the University of Ottawa last year. And uh, he was joking his cousin was two-time All-Canadian, Chris Avrere, and when he got the call from Hamilton, he, he showed up. He said the Ticats probably were hoping it was Chris instead who was going to be a top prospect in this league in a year or two. Ricky Foggy, and Foggy almost picked off. He was looking for Andrew Grigg. Donald Smith back in the game denied that pass. Well, I talked earlier about how Donald Smith likes to gamble. Here it is right here. He reads the route and watch him break on the football. He breaks underneath Andrew Grigg and Grigg's arm in there actually prevented the interception. Well, Donald Smith just did push-ups, I think, as his penance for not coming up with the pick. There he is. Well, this is something defensive backs do and practice a lot during training camp. If you drop an interception, you do push-ups. He feels like he dropped one there. Well, he had a block punt in the third down. quarter, which really... There it is, throw it This up. one into the Laffer category. A pass for a rare knockdown. And Marcelo Simmons was in coverage. Now well, Ricky was late with the throw. It allowed Marcelo Simmons to get back over on Pin and he had a chance to make a nice catch. You see Ricky banging on himself there. He should have made, he, he knows he should have made the throw earlier. You see Avera's open early. Now the throw's behind him and underneath, and Simmons comes in and makes the play. And that was a third down gamble by the Tiger Cats. They turn it over on downs. Simmons with a touchdown tonight on the fumble recovery. Four Tiger Cat turnovers. But just about every category has weighted heavily in the Argos side. Drummond battling for a couple. You know, they've done all this without Robert Drummond being a dominant force tonight, certainly not like he was in the final regular season game last year when he scored four times or in the first half of the Montreal game this year when he scored four touchdowns. They were all reaching for the record books that night at Skydome when he had four majors in the first half. Second down and seven, Andre Ware skips that pass to Drummond. And it will be third down. Well, Philbrick got a nice lick on Andre Ware there. I'm sure that makes him feel a little bit better. And these are the reasons you don't have Doug Flutie in because the, that defense is just gonna come after you and, and put some licks on you. Philbrick, three-man rush, makes one of the best linemen in this league missing, and Mike Kislak, and he buries the 89 Heisman Trophy winner. Well, next week, Hamilton will entertain Montreal. Vander Jet got the punt away. Steinauer trying to get outside, and Argo pursuit is relentless. 11.36 to go here. Young and old, and I don't think anybody's enjoying this one in Hamilton. Mars Pro proceeding to Mighty Max. A line on Vector 206, making mid-course correction to Vector 207. Investigating metallic object. Let's switch to zoom. Deploying probe. It appears we're looking at some kind of, some kind of ID. What do you make of that, George? 
I'll be darned. Oh, hi. It's Midasized Days, and that's why we can't afford a complete commercial. We couldn't afford the whole screen. But, you know, what we saved, we're passing on to you. For a limited time, Midas will give you a computerized wheel alignment, plus balance all four wheels and rotate your tires, all for an amazing $39.95. They even inspect your brakes for free. What a deal. Okay, so you lean in and squint, and the commercial will look perfectly normal. Huh? Midas, the way it should be. Offer ends September 27th. Royal Canadian Air Force. We can walk tall knowing those people down there are going to enjoy the same kind of food that Canadians know and love. Donuts. Royal Canadian Air Force on CBC. True stories of the rise to power and the struggle to hold it on the best of our award-winning documentaries all summer long on The National, weeknights on CBC. I think it's a safe bet that Flutie's night is done, and what an efficient and surgical performance he put on. Efficient is exactly the number, 75% completion, 270 yards and four touchdowns. It doesn't get any better than that. It's bad news for the rest of the league. Uh, he backed up the comment that he's healthier than ever with his performance tonight. Here's Boggy under pressure again. Down he goes at the 25-yard line, and that's the rush in Reggie Gibbons out of Penn State. He of the 4 5 8 40, catching up to Ricky Foggy. Well, what they've done is they've Increased a little bit of pressure. They saw Foggy was making some plays running around a little bit, and so they're going to get Benson and Givens and those people involved in the rush. I saw Michael O'Shea up there, and this is just a great defense. It's a it's a defense that again, if you don't do well on first down, you're really going to struggle against. And they've they've played their a game plan perfectly the way they want to do things. Second and eleven for the Cats at 25. Wimbley reached back and almost made a fine catch. Incomplete and a third down coming up. Earlier today, the Calgary Stampeders with a 27-14 victory, and they are at 500 after the 0-3 start, winning the first half of that back-to-back doubleheader against the Edmonton Eskimos. and. Uh, Looks like the Stampeders are right back on track. They really are. They, they struggled two weeks ago in BC, but come back with a solid effort here on Labor Day against their arch enemy, the Edmonton Eskimos. The Eskimos, uh, Danny McManus went down with another injury. We're going to see if he can play Friday night. Here's Clements dancing around, but not getting anywhere that time. Cooper Harris again is the man to make the special teams tackle. And a loss of three after the 44-yard punt as we join Mark. Well, Chris, we've got the play that is considered the turning point in the Battle of Alberta. Danny McManus picked off by Marvin Coleman. A big return on the play, and this interception would set up Jeff Garcia's one-yard touchdown run in that 27-14 Calgary win. Here's what's coming up next week, the CFL on CBC. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers coming off that big win yesterday against Saskatchewan will face the Argos. That is BC at Saskatchewan. Check your local listings. And the Green Riders trying to regroup in a same situation for BC after letting one slip away Saturday in Montreal. Here's Drummond with the catch up at the 50-yard line. Calvin Tiggle the tackle on Robert Drummond. Well, Jeff Reinbold, you know, is really relishing the fact, and I said this earlier, about getting ready to play Toronto. I know he likes to play against the best. And he considers Don Matthews the best, and he likes to go head to head against Don Matthews. And he'll have that team ready to play. Bombers now within two games of Saskatchewan. In the race for the wild card, the standings were frozen today, and the playoffs started. Even though Saskatchewan's last, they get in in the East as a playoff team. Drummond almost bursting loose. He's into Hamilton territory at the 45. It just surprises me, Chris, the different wrinkles you see. Here's here's a play that Flutie never ran in the game while he was in, and here's Andre Ware in the game, and they run a screen, an inside screen pass to Drummond, and they pick up another big gain, and they just continue to come with different wrinkles. Don Matthews says that 
you put the players on the field, you give them a few tools, but you let the players go play, and they haven't missed a stride. Now Andre Ware and they're moving their offense. First down, Drummond, and a big defensive play by Michael Philbrick. Filled the hole that time. Playing on pride right now, Michael Philbrick. As Joe Moss looks on. And it'll be a tough day of films, I'm sure. It's going to be a difficult day of films. There's some good things on this film from this defense. They don't have a lot of things to point to offensively, and I think that they really need to look at what they're doing special teams-wise. This team has some good returners. They're not returning the football very well. Several areas to address. Again, it's a little deceiving the second half as far as the Hamilton defense is concerned. Here's Clements with a catch. And he's wrapped up and driven back by Frank West. But remember, one touchdown on the block punt, another on a fumble recovery for a touchdown. So the defense scored on once in the second half. Well, we saw the third quarter stats when Hamilton had the, the better of it in time of possession. And if you told me that this defense would have held Toronto to just 20 minutes in the first three quarters, and they would have had the time of possession lead, I wouldn't have guessed the score to be like this. Second and 10. Andre Ware caught the controls. And Ware behind Saunders as Ware was feeling the heat. So Willie Whitehead bearing down on Ware, forcing the incompletion. Well, Irvin Bowman thinks Willie Whitehead is cut from the same cloth as a Alfred Payton, and he got pressure that time and came in from his outside in position. Bowman really likes Whitehead. I, I think anybody in the league that's watched Whitehead play likes the way he plays. And he's a force on this team. Young guy, too. This, this defense is a young defense. They're going to be around for a while. Getting an education tonight. Ware and Drummond can't hang on. It'll be third down, 6.51 to play. Urban Bowman was saying he got a call at 11 o'clock at home on Saturday night from a fan who wanted to tell him how to coach the team. I think Urban better get that phone number out of the uh, phone book because he may get a few more calls after tonight. Well, Urban likes to have fun, but I guarantee you Don's having the better of it tonight. He's enjoying his team's performance, and this may have been their most solid performance of the season. Yeah, the only bad thing that's happened to Don Matthews this weekend is the insurance has run out on the Harley-Davidson. <laughs> Mike Vanderjet into a tip of 41-yarder, and that's been blocked. A block by the... Hamilton Tiger Cats hit back up with the ball, and Doug Flutie made the tackle. How about that? Flutie upending Hitchcock. Vanderjack has one rejected by the Tiger Cats. I don't just own my business. I am my business. When you run your own business, there are no sick days. I treat my customers the way I expect to be treated, like the owner. Over the years, we've worked with thousands of small businesses, and we've learned something from all of them. Introducing Solutions for Small Business from Bell. I am the last boss I will ever have. Morning has broken. For what happened while you slept and what might happen after breakfast across the street and around the globe, wake up to CBC Morning News. Your day starts here. Weekdays on CBC Television. Extreme Sports. I was buried up to my nose. I thought I was dead. When things go wrong, who pays for the rescue? You feel like you're doing God's work, but God's no longer prepared to pay. Marketplace, Tuesday. Okay, the Riverdale Community News isn't exactly the New York Times, but it's a great place to learn, and I'm focusing on my career. Even if Mr. Perfect walked in right now, I wouldn't notice. Riverdale, new this fall on CBC. I just 
want the facts. One of the hottest series ever to air is now on CBC. We were able to take you live into the... He's crazy about you. <laughs> the story stands. I'm not going to back down now. Stay with it. ENG on CBC weekdays. Well, Doug Flutie's a super athlete. He can make a lot of things happen for you on offense, but here's something he definitely didn't want to see. You see his eyes? He says, I got a 215-pounder coming at me. Let me get down on the ground. And I'll, if I can get his legs, okay, fine. I'm going to get off the field now. He got off in a hurry. <laughs> I can't believe you're dissing a fellow quarterback. That was a heck of a play. That was play. a nice play. Here's the pitch to Willie Brown. Left side. He's drilled as he hits the 40-yard line. I know Calvin Tickle was sizing you up yesterday like you might be in there looking for a linebacking job. <laughs> well, I couldn't run like uh, Doug does. And Looks like they're going back to work. The Labor Day weekend drawing to a close. And unfortunately for Hamilton fans, the tie Cats being torched here at Ivor Wynn. told you all weekend the Labor Day Classic is always a classic. Dave Archer is ready for a nail biter here. Well, it certainly started out that way. It certainly started out the team was both teams were playing close to the vest tough defense but this Toronto offense is just so difficult and the Toronto defense doesn't allow you to breathe if you're not going to do anything first down wise and move the football then they're going to get you out of there and give the ball back to Flutie. 537 to go and Osbaldiston back in the punt. A chance for Clemens to add to his totals. Although Osbaldiston angling that near the bench, picked up by Donald Smith, who gets the no yards call. And now we got something going down there. And in the middle of it was Joe Romolo. So the frustration showing here for the Cats. my customers the way I expect to be treated, like the owner. Over the years, we've worked with thousands of small businesses, and we've learned something from all of them. Introducing Solutions for Small Business from Bell. I am the last boss I will ever have. the Yellow Pages directories across Canada on the internet. There's rookie Joe Romolo, a Scarborough native, who made the tackle and then tried to strip the ball away from Donald Smith and uh, a crowd of Argos for his trouble. And Romolo gets 15 yards for roughing. And the Argonauts have the football at the Tiger Cat 41. Complete to Drummond with Calvin Tiggle on his back at the 35. That's a, quite a race between Robert Drummond and, and 
Pringle in Montreal between who, who's going to be the best back in this league. Pringle had a super day Saturday, rushed for 140 yards and a couple of touchdowns, made a couple of big plays late in that ball game to allow Montreal to win the game over BC 34-33. And Drummond's had a solid night again tonight for this ball club. He's the touchdown leader. We showed you the four TDs against Montreal, 13 on the year, but uh, Drummond hasn't seen the end zone yet tonight. Second now, they give it back to Drummond, and he'll kick it outside. Breaks one tackle. And Robert Drummond with a nice run down to the 25-yard line, and he'll move the yardsticks. And more flags now, and uh, more Campbell, heated exchanges. Mike Campbell's going to get flagged here, Chris, for a late hit. And he plays on the edge all the time, and he hit one of the offensive linemen in the back late. Major foul. Unnecessary roughness. Hamilton, number 98. First down. Argo's highest total this year, 46 points in a 46-8 route of the Alouettes. That was the four-touchdown game for Drummond. And they are now moving into scoring position again. And there are the numbers on the night. Well, this is the number one ranked offense in the league. They average 400 yards a game, and they're closing in on that. And Doug Flutie was maybe his best of the year tonight. Darrell Mitchell with two touchdowns. Pinball Clements with a pair. Specialty teams have one. The defense has one. And that pass sailing over the head of Paul Mazzotti, who looked like he was open in the end zone. Let's join Mark. Well, Chris, I just uh, paid a visit to Earl Winfield uh, in the Ticat uh, dressing room, or rather on the sideline here. And uh, his left foot is all uh, iced up now. He has a severe turf toe. Told me he's uh, finished for this game, and it looks like uh, his career as a tie cat is indeed over. I asked him if he would be uh, going to the school and, uh, and not coming back for weekend games, and uh, that is a fait accompli. So uh, a tough ending for Earl Winfield, who's uh, had some great games here for the tie cats over the years. Here's Pinball Clements, and he's wrapped up and tossed out by Kenny Wilhite. I'll tell you what, he uh, was one of my favorite players to watch in this league. Earl Win Winfield was uh, a battler at the wide receiver position, but he had that athletic quality too. He was uh, just a super athlete that made everything look so easy and uh, fun to watch. And 11 great years and as one of the great cats of all time and a potential Hall of Famer. Well, I don't think there's any question he's a Hall of Famer, Chris, and his name will shortly be up on the ring of honor here on this stadium here at Ivor Wynn. Eight, one of the all-time great players, a super guy, and, and his, his leadership will be missed in this ball club when he leaves, but he's got a commitments that take him into another life, and that's gonna that's gonna be fun for him. He's excited about it too, and he's he's gonna do some great things down there. Vanderjack to attempt a field goal here, and it's good. So the Argos have matched their season high with 46 points. This Vanderjack attempt not blocked. There's Earl saying goodbye. Number love for you. Call me sometime. Come down, have dinner, donuts, coffee. There you go, an invite to go visit Earl after it's over. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Like a rock. Hey, when are you going to buy a new truck and uh, sell me this one? You know, you deserve a new truck, man. Oh, come on, man. You know, I've been asking you for years. How much you want for it? You know, ballpark, what do you think? I mean, you're going to keep it forever? Come on. Right. Chevy, the longest lasting, most dependable trucks on the road. I think I might know someone who can take it off your hands for you. Really? This morning the sun rose and I woke up. Now I will cut the strings off my mittens. I will get on the bandwagon and stay on it. I will be curious. I will build it and they will come. I will be more than just a number. I won't get in line. I'll start a new one. And when the sun finally sets, I will be there. Next. Ride 'em cowboy. Is there room in the 90s for this family business? A good old fashioned Wild West show. Go no invest money in show business. Hitting the road, Tuesday night on Venture. No matter where he goes, we will follow him, we will track him. A convicted sexual offender tries to start a new life, but will his victims ever let him? I want to see him dead. Hunting Bobby Otway, Tuesday on Witness.
Well, our producer, Mike Brannigan, thinks he's got a pretty hot internet page. So give it a try at www.tv.cbc.ca slash CFL. And it is a good looking page. And we'll have lots of information, highlights for you, and give you a chance to participate. Ricky Foggy had the ball stripped away, but gets back on it as Reggie Givens came off the edge again. Well, just when you thought that maybe this defense maybe would fall back and let you complete a few footballs, here comes Reggie Givens again, relentless. He gets by Peter Shorts there, and Pete's played a pretty good game tonight. They've got some pretty good rushers on this team, but that time Reggie got by him. What's the worst you've ever been beaten in a game, and how'd you respond the next week? <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, for the first three or four days, you didn't respond at all. You had, you had uh, a lot. There was a lot of numbness throughout your body, and I can't remember the worst beating you ever had. But it's not a fun, fun thing, and certainly this might be one of those films that they might burn offensively. There's some good things to watch defensively, but offensively they just have really not been able to muster anything. And I don't know that there's a lot of value to this film for the offense uh, of Hamilton. And it, it's, it's just really a tough day, especially when you're one. We were in a similar situation last year in Ottawa. And, and of course, at this time of the year last year, we had that great outpouring of, of public support and everybody rallied and we were able to beat Montreal in Frank Clair Stadium there in Ottawa and behind in front of 30,000 fans. So it was a little bit different feeling for us at that time. But this is a downer and uh, it's going to take real pros to step up and rally to play the last eight games of the season for this team. And just a small core of veteran players. Osbaldiston, the senior guy and a big kick there which goes out of bounds. And that's what Anthony Calvillo was saying yesterday that at one and eight the season was not lost but it's hard to tell players that haven't been in this league before that the turnarounds can be quick. The BC Lions were one and eight at the turn last year and now they're one of the better teams in the CFL. Uh, but that comes with experience and there's not a lot of it on that Hamilton bench. No we discussed the, the 24 starters on this ball club offensive and defensively. They only have about 3.9 years of experience. But if you remove the Mike Campbells and the Ura Winfields and the Paulus Balsons, those people off of that group, they only have two years of experience. So this is a group that's still learning how to play the CFL, and there's a lot of talent on that team. Drummond takes the handoff from Ware and is tripped up over the 40-yard line. Joe Montford pulling Drummond down. Well, Montreal comes in and is going to tackle this Hamilton Dean next week and be a big matchup for them because they're going to have the hard running Mike Pringle coming in here and and uh, they'll have to regroup and be ready to play because that's an offense that comes right at you. No, no secret to what they're doing. They're going to pound Mike Pringle at you and Tracy Ham's going to run around and make some plays. So another tough matchup doesn't get any easier. No, it doesn't. Remarkably, Hamilton has done the best job against Pringle this year and two previous starts. Pringle held to his lowest totals against the Hamilton D. Going to Drummond on every play, it seems now, and he's up to the 45 of first down for Robert Drummond. 80 yards for Drummond receiving tonight. And he now has 86 yards on the ground. So as the Argos are completing their books on tonight's game, they still might be looking for a 100 yard rushing game for Robert Drummond. You know, remarkably, this team with so many offensive weapons, they put up so many great numbers. They've only had four 100 yard receiving games this year. That's an indication of how Doug Flutie uses everybody. It really is. Doug spreads the ball around as he did again tonight. Mitchell was a monster factor tonight. So was pinball. But you see Drummond getting his shots. There's Andre Ware trying to sidestep a tackler and just got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, that's what's so impressive about this offense. And we talked about it when Andre Ware came in the game. I saw two or three plays that they hadn't even used while Doug was in the ball game. And the, the versatility of their players and their offensive scheme makes it very difficult to defend this team. And if you're not getting any production on your offense, you have to match these guys with some scores. If you, if you keep your defense on the field all night, 
and certainly put them in situations, bad field position situations, you're going to pay the price. Second and ten for the Argo. There flushed out, Willie Whitehead was on his back as he tried to deliver the pass. So Whitehead still breathing fire. Yeah, Willie Whitehead, he would make my all CFL team at the halfway point. This guy just continues to come, and that's what Urban Bowman said about him. He says he does not play, take any plays off. He continues to fight and scrap, and it's 46 to three here at Ivor Wynn, but 92 is still coming, trying to rip the head off a quarterback. I don't think Auburn lost many games 46 to three, did they? <laughs> no. No, Jordan Hare Stadium down there in Auburn didn't see many of these. Steinauer from inside is 15. Mike Gaucher leading the tacklers for the Argonauts. Well, we're down to the final 44 seconds. And mercifully, it'll be over for the hometown Tiger Cats, and their record will drop to 0-5 at home and 1-9 and on the year. And the Argonauts with the best team in the league through 10 games at 8-2. That might be the most disappointing thing for Urban Bowman is the fact that they haven't won a game here in front of the home fans at Ivor Wynn. I remember as a player coming in here, this is a difficult place to win. I only won one time here at Ivor Wynn, and that was late in the ball game. We came in here as Sacramento group and won a game late in the ball game. So it was, this is a tough place to win. They, the fans are tough here, and they're, not, they're right on top of you on the bench over there, and they're constantly nagging at you. So this, it's been tough for them not to win here at home. It's a great place to, to win when you are because of the, I use the word loosely, the intimate confines here because <laughs> Hamilton fans are uh, never in the intimate category, but they are passionate. Well, here are the standings after. This game will go in the books and the Argos with the best record in the league, but just staying one step ahead of those Alouettes. They have to play Montreal twice in the final three weeks of the season in the final game is on CBC in the final weekend of the, and British Columbia trying to keep pace and now have actually been helped out by the Calgary win. They lost against Montreal Saturday, so they just stay one game back. And like we said, Calgary sneaking up the ladder. I think that anybody that knows anything about the CFL knows that Wally Bono's crew is gonna be in the hunt when it comes down to playoff time. 14 seconds to go, Lee Knight slow to get to his feet. Don Matthews now one win away from tying Frank Clare's CFL coaching record of 147 victories. He'll try and get even with Frank Clare next week in Winnipeg. Now when Don Matthews passes Frank Clare, do they name a stadium after him? I would think he'd almost be obligated to name a stadium after him. He's, he's coached extremely well in this league. And Several Grey Cup wins. Seems like he's camped in the Grey Cup here the last several years. Well, he was right on the mark when he said, my guys were so ready, I gave them Saturday off. I didn't want them to leave it on the field. They certainly didn't tonight. A thorough thrashing of the Hamilton Tiger Cats in what is known as the Labor Day Classic, but was only a classic for one team tonight. All Toronto tonight, Chris, and it was Doug Flutie and Flutie football, that's what Matthews likes to call it, Flutie ball on both sides of the football, and he got it done tonight. 46 to three, the final at Ivor Wynn. Want to make your car look new? Every time you wash it, don't forget armor all protecting. The dash, the tires, the trim. It's new car juice. It doesn't just shine, it protects. So your car doesn't just look new, it keeps looking new. Armor All, it's new car juice. Just look at another test site. Talk to me. Road testing, Stuttgart, monitor six. Lateral G's point nine three. Speed. Mass power, 150. Push in, 500%. Pushing in, 500%. Speed, one, six, zero, and climbing. Enhance that. Speed, one seven zero, still climbing. Anybody have any idea what this is? I do. Well, it's the next vet. Get me one.
When back pain begins to cramp your style, ordinary pain relievers often aren't enough. Doctors and pharmacists recommend Robaxacet. It combines two active ingredients, one to relieve your back pain, the other to relax your tense back muscles. Now available in extra strength. Robaxacet, helping you walk away from back pain. Oh, great. TV spokesperson, my long distance savings plan. There are just so many restrictions. Can you show me the way? Get the most savings plan from Sprint Canada. Call any day, any time, to anywhere in Canada for just 15 cents a minute. No more waiting for nighttime or weekends. No minimums. Free at last. Well, almost. Huh? It's still 15 cents a minute. Oh, right. <laughs> Next! Get the most for the least from Sprint Canada. Call 1 800 the most today. Back in Hamilton on the aftermath of the Labor Day Classic, it's all Toronto on this night to the tune of 46 to 3. Joining me, wide receiver Earl Winfield of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Earl, uh, all kinds of speculation that you will indeed announce your retirement after this game to take a job as a director of admissions at a school in Virginia. Yeah, that seems to be the plan. Uh, and uh, that's what we uh, anticipated when I first came back for the six or seven games. And uh, the time is over now, so uh, we're, we're expecting for me to go back to the school. A lot of great memories here. You hear the fans chanting your name. Uh, 11 seasons, more than 10,000 yards. You are the all-time receiver, and here's some highlights tonight. Well, you know, it's been a great city. It's been a great, uh, fans are great. It's just been a great experience for me over the past 10, 11 years. Uh, this is home for me, and uh, it will always be a close place to my heart. We heard from Matt Dunnigan earlier tonight in a feature saying how hard it was to leave football. What about you? It is very hard, especially now. I mean, I'm playing good. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm an older guy, but I'm having a lot of fun, and, 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 and it's hard to leave the game. But, you know, there's life after football. There sure is life, and uh, I understand you've got a great job ahead as a, a director of admissions at a Virginia military school. All the best, uh, Earl. Thank you very much. And thank you for the memories. Earl Winfield, an outstanding wide receiver and a tribute to the CFL, playing perhaps his last game here in Hamilton. We're back right after this. Thanks a lot, man. Mars Pro proceeding to Mighty Max. A line on Vector 206, making mid-course correction to Vector 207. Investigating metallic object. Let's switch to zoom. Deploying probe. It appears we're looking at some kind of, some kind of ID. What do you make of that, George? I'll be darned. Did you see the look on his face? Hey, here comes another one. Come to Papa. Wait, not a Ford Contour. That thing's got more moves than a cat. And it's so quick. What do they think we are, Greyhounds? Coming in test drive the newly restyled 1998 Ford Contour. One drive will surprise you. Hey, you guys up for a little Italian? <laughs> The look and shape of music have changed. You're unbelievable. Combine cutting edge CD technology with 20 hits from today's hottest stars. The sound is hip hop and the look is eye popping. To order, have your credit card ready and call 1 888 823 4777. With each purchase, you may win Reebok and Major League Baseball gear and a dream trip to the World Series. Supplies of these collector CDs are limited. Operators are standing by. Call 1 888 823 4777. I'm 69 this year, so I've got to convert my RRSPs. It's the most important financial decision of our lifetime. Riffs, annuities, tax and estate planning, it's so complicated. I need to explore all my options. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. To help you make the right decision, call 1-888-660-6164, and a Scotiabank retirement advisor will come to your home and take you through our exclusive Scotia Lifetime Financial Guide. Based on your numbers, we'll show you your options, then help you decide on the best plan. The Scotia Lifetime Financial Guide is personalized to meet your retirement goals, and it's yours to keep, no obligation, no cost. For help converting your RSPs or for more information, call Scotiabank now at 1-888-660-6164. What do you think? Wonderful. Peace of mind. I like it. 
Welcome back to Hamilton. The firework display, spectacular, perhaps the symbolic of the fireworks we saw on offense this evening from the Toronto Argonauts. And joining me here on the sidelines, one of the men who uh, provided some spark here today, Mike Pinball Clemens with two touchdowns. Mike, your comment on the game. Uh, I th thought it was a great game defensively for us. They were the ones that really kept us in the ball game. I think the first quarter, it was 3 nothing. I don't think we even scored in the, in the first quarter. And they kept us in the ball game, kept us around, got the offense the ball back. And when you get Doug Foody the ball a lot of times, there's your second touchdown here, Mike. Yeah, there's the there's the man in, in his perfect form there, scrambling around, finding a place, and he makes it look easy. You guys look so awesome. You look invincible here today. Uh, you just had a baby girl, a new baby girl. This must be a great way to celebrate that. Uh, yes, no doubt about it. And uh, got a perfect little pa package, and, and uh, uh, my wife gave, sent me that package on Thursday, and uh, then Doug gave me another little package in the end zone there that I can take home to a, a little football for a touchdown, so it's nice. Well, you're peaking, and at midseason, you're the best team in the country. Congratulations, Mike Clemens. Thank you so much, Mark. Appreciate it. It's a right. totally team effort. You're welcome. Mike Clemens and the Argos winning easily here on Labor Day, 46-3 over the Hamilton Tiger Cats here at Ivor Wind Stadium. Oh, hi. It's Midasized Days, and that's why we can't afford a complete commercial. We couldn't afford the whole screen. But, you know, what we saved, we're passing on to you. For a limited time, Midas will give you a computerized wheel alignment, plus balance all four wheels and rotate your tires, all for an amazing $39.95. They even inspect your brakes for free. What a deal. Okay, so you lean in and squint, and the commercial will look perfectly normal. Huh? Midas, the way it should be. Offer ends September 27th. In a busy clinic like this, things can get pretty crazy. Like the other day, a headache hit and I needed fast relief. We could have taken aspirin or Tylenol, but more and more doctors are now recommending Advil. They say just one Advil's tough on headaches. And they're right. One is often enough. Advil, now available in gel caplets. I'm 69 this year, so I've got to convert my RRSPs. It's the most important financial decision of our lifetime. Riffs, annuities, tax and estate planning, it's so complicated. I need to explore all my options. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. To help you make the right decision, call 1-888-660-6164, and a Scotiabank retirement advisor will come to your home and take you through our exclusive Scotia Lifetime Financial Guide. Based on your numbers, we'll show you your options, then help you decide on the best plan. The Scotia Lifetime Financial Guide is personalized to meet your retirement goals, and it's yours to keep, no obligation, no cost. For help converting your RSPs or for more information, call Scotiabank now at 1-888-660-6164. What do you think? Wonderful. Peace of mind. I like it. The look and shape of music have changed. You're unbelievable. Combine cutting-edge CD technology with 20 hits from today's hottest stars. The sound is hip-hoppin'. The look is eye-poppin'. To order, have your credit card ready and call 1-888-823-4777. With each purchase, you may win Reebok and Major League Baseball gear and a dream trip to the World Series. Supplies of these collector CDs are limited. Operators are standing by. Call 1-888-823-4777. The Argos match their season high with a 46-point explosion on Labor Day. The Cats remain winless at home in a sorry 1-9 and nine season. Here's what's on the menu next week on CBC Sports. Labatt's Blue Jays baseball is Texas at Toronto at 7.30 Eastern from the Sky Dome. Next Saturday, Labatt Blue Pro Beach Volleyball. From Savile Beach, it's the Canadian Men's Championship. And then next Sunday, we're back to CFL on CBC. It's Toronto at Winnipeg from Winnipeg Stadium and BC at Saskatchewan. Check your local listings for details. Here in Hamilton tonight, the Argos rule on Labor Day. Mike Pinball Clemens with a two touchdown performance, a classy champion, and there's another classy man headed in another direction into retirement after 11 seasons in the CFL. Thanks for watching.
CBC Sports, home of the champions. A special summer series, Venture in Business, Tuesday at 8.30. This is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. I was over on that, that occasion.